Yeah, that's not done. And uh, now what? Uh, oh. Um. Ah. Uh, that'll be that bit. Ah, I haven't sprayed that bit. Oh well, back to the spray booth. Hi everyone, welcome. Welcome back to part four of the uh, emails build of the Trumpeter 148 scale U-Boat, the Type 7C, uh, by me, Ted, uh, here for emodels, emodels.co.uk. That's them um, down, down there. There they are. Uh, right, in this video uh, we're going to have a look at putting together the control room. Uh, we've done the forward torpedo room the officers sleeping quarters and we're moving aft now and uh, the next compartment back from that is the control room uh, that's where all the uh, the business happens uh, the skipper doing his skippering stuff um, the helmsman driving the submarine um, and all the other knobs and buttons and dials and valves and things that have to be pulled pushed and pressed uh, to make a submarine function um, I've had a couple of weeks to have a look at this since the last uh, video was was made uh, and I've got that one finished um, because it's really um, it's not so much difficult but it's there's quite a lot of parts in this um, that we need to uh, sort of get together and work out what we're going to paint and when we're going to paint it uh, and it caused me quite a bit of a headache um, just trying to work out uh, when to paint, where to paint, which to paint uh, because as you know um, you can guarantee that as soon as you've uh, painted something, got your airbrush out, uh, been to the spray booth um, put everything together and sprayed it all uh, you put everything away, clean it, clean it all up, put everything away and you find some bits that you haven't painted um, and it caused a real headache because um, the instructions in the paint call out are not exactly easy to follow um, you have to keep going backwards and forwards and then looking at what uh, parts are in the assembly instructions as to what parts they refer to in the paint guides because they're not numbered in the paint guide um, uh, but uh, I think I've got the idea and I've got on with it but uh, let's go across to the bench anyway have a look where we've got up to and see I'll show you what I'm talking about anyway so let's get across the bench uh, once I've pressed the button down here somewhere there we are all right here we are here's the paint call out for the uh, type 7c u552 um, and as you can see if you have this yes if you have the model yourself it does sort of show the colors and all the numbers of the paints and the, the everything that's called out there uh, but it doesn't show everything on one page uh, there's some pieces around here that are all missing and uh, some pieces here and then you turn over and it shows the other end of the uh, compartment um, and there's bits missing from down here now uh, so you can't sort of cross reference them without having to go backwards and forwards now here's here's the deck head uh, this is all the overhead bits uh, here's the hatches here um, and the apertures the open hole openings for the periscope uh, the other one here um, but then it continues it goes on again uh, to this this is separate again it, it's included 
see, see what I mean? You've got to go back again. That's the bit that goes in here. But it's shown all the way in here. And then there are these parts here that are not a part of that body, but they have to be glued on. So you've got to work out from your assembly instructions which parts they are see these here and these bits here which parts they are so that you can then uh, find them on the sprue and there's loads of them to work out what you're going to paint but I think I've got it done and what we've done at the moment is I've got this bit sort of generally assembled that's see it there that's it there now I had a little bit of a discussion on the eModels live stream uh, about what this part was it really baffled me because it's quite a big piece of equipment uh, and I'll show you the, the little guy here I think uh, you may have seen him on the uh, web and that's how big it is now I wonder what it was We've had all sorts of discussions and suggestions that uh, it may be part of the escape equipment. Um, yeah, but it's going to be, get a guy to go, is it going the wrong way? Get a guy going in there. Yeah, the escape equipment is quite, it's going to be a tight. There is a manhole type opening here, which give led to a suggestion that it may be escape equipment. But I don't think it is because of where it's positioned. Um, let's go back to the car because what we do, see see how complicated it is, there's about uh, one, two, yeah that's the, the last room there, it's, there's one, two, three, four, five pages of construction just for the uh, control room. Now there's that bit there, goes next to the uh, access ladder there, which um, I can't find it now, I've lost the, the route, I've, lo I've lost the, the decade. But there is the openings, there's one, two, three openings. So this part does actually come through the hull. And then if we continue on, Working it out. Where did I find it? I'm trying to find it now. There's the engine, there's the engine room. We've got that to build yet. We'll continue further on. I think it goes right to the end. Almost to the end here. Now we see here, here's the base of the bridge fin. There, there's the, uh, there's the um, conning tower, the bridge fin access into the control room. Uh, there's the first periscope and there's the access hole that we're talking about here for this piece. Now that, as somebody has mentioned and thought of, is there. It is what we believe now is to be the um, equipment for the attack periscope. Um, and I think that's all it can be because there's two periscopes, there's that one there, uh, search an attack or attack and search I'm not sure which way around here uh, but I think that's where it's going to be see yeah. so that's where it's going to be now then in the control room sorry if I'm waffling a little bit but I'm just trying to get this across to you um, what we find in the control room is that there are two shades of paint uh, the painted at about halfway up um, it's shown as H118 and above that is H338. So the control room is painted in a two-tone colour. It's the only compartment that is. We can see here on this bulkhead. See if you can work it out on the camera. It's painted in two-tone colours. So you've got to have a straight line running a right round the boat. The equipment here, some of the equipment here is painted the same colour as the lower one and some is painted in 338 as it goes up. Now 338, 118, the colour of this, you see I've already sprayed this half, is uh, Mr Hobby uh, 118. Now 
it is the call out as per um, the actual call outs. What I've tried to do is I've tried to convert all the colours um, to acrylics. Um, and yeah, I've got an acrylic, but it's. Um, Oh, sorry about that. The uh, the computer just sort of shut down. I just was about to tell you what this was. Uh, this is the Mr. Color uh, lacquer paint. Um, unlike the acrylics, uh, this needs a bit of special attention if you're airbrushing or, in fact, using this because it stinks. Um, I thinned it with the appropriate uh, Mr. Color thinner. Um, a a lacquer thinner. Uh, there is Mr. Colour uh, leveling uh, thinners as well, um, but uh, I, I I went with this and I use this, and it's a pretty good uh, paint to use. Uh, obviously for me models, um, but what I've done, I've used the the colour as the call out uh, because I couldn't actually find um, a conversion uh, to an acrylic. Um, I was just getting myself lost going round and round in circles so I thought what the heck I'll just use the the colours that they were but uh, yeah if you're going to use this stuff um, either use it outside or use it in uh, a well vent ventilated area uh, preferably or I would certainly recommend a proper half mask respirator not one of these paper DIY dusting things because it will knock you out uh, plenty of warnings on the back uh, for it. Uh, right, um, now then, because we've done that and because of lots of um, lumpy bumpy bits, yep, you heard it right, lumpy bumpy bits, all around this piece of equipment, uh, there needs to be a demarcation line right round half of it, about halfway up. And I've been scratching my head uh, wondering how I'm going to do this. Uh, then I came up with an idea because uh, of how to do it because obviously we painted the first part and we didn't want to overspray uh, the second part so how are we going to mark it off? Yeah we could use uh, masking tape, uh, some of the uh, thin Tamiya masking tape but that I don't think would have got into all the nooks and crannies. Uh, so what I thought about doing was trying some blue tack. I just wait till my we'll move this out of the way and get the white balance to come back properly. Um, was using the blue tack and trying to get a straight line. Uh, but what we're going to do is feed the blue tack in to where we want about where we want to go and using I'll just get out the drawer. Excuse me a moment, there's a bit of noise in the background. Uh, using um, a shaping knife is just to get the blue tack to go in and you can fill it in get the, yeah, just get the blue tack in and keep it sort of generally in the right sort of place that you're going to want the defining line. Now I'm hoping this works. I haven't actually done this before. Uh, it was the thought that came to me and I thought well we'll try it out. We're doing it live on cam uh, on on the video so you can see how it goes and whether or not it works. So we can press it in. We don't worry too much. We're not at the moment we're not trying to get it exactly on the line that we're going to uh, spray to. We need, what we're trying to do is fill all the uh, fill all the gaps in. Now if it doesn't work we'll just have to re-spray it again. So pushing, pushing it down. Sorry if I'm bouncing the camera a little bit but that's it. Now then, what we're going to do now is, so is find our demarcation line. Now hopefully I've pressed enough in this to fill everything. So now we go for our scalpel 
and working about where we need to be is this is where our spray line is going to be. Do you get the idea now what we're doing? It should, I'm saying it should, hopefully fill the line and we have a nice line around the other side. We haven't, no I haven't, I haven't quite met it. Doesn't matter, we can do take the first lot off. And we can see if we got it right. What we need to do, you just need to make sure, you could use a white tack, I understand that, uh, well I believe that white tack um, is very similar to blue tack but it doesn't leave an oily residue. Uh, but I'm thinking that in this case the blue tack isn't going to be on long enough to cause much of a problem. I just need to feed it back. Uh, just when you lift it off just need to touch it back down just to where it's lifted off right uh, we can just see in there how it's just pulled away it's just when we've cut it it's just pulled away from the surface a little bit, we're just to push it back and we should be doing the job. There's a little bit of concentration here. Now it's not a matter of measuring how, what I, yeah, it's not a matter of measuring how high up the demarcation line is. Um, it's a matter of judging it by eye from checking the pieces of equipment that are on and where see see it's just at the bend on those pipes there and round the back it just goes over the top of that piece of equipment there so we can work to that and we can see there I think we can see that piece just needs to be pushed in there a little bit because remember when you're airbrushing your paint will creep and I think we've about got it there's just that little bit there to clean up and I'll do that and then get it across to the spray booth and we'll have a look at that and the same thing we can do here as well as we saw before on the watertight bulkhead In there, there's that line that goes across there, which is this piece in here. I've already sprayed it. So I've just got to do the same now and get a piece of putty just to go across there and then I can spray the top. So right, I'm going to get that done. That's this part done. And then we'll come back and have a look at somebody else. So see you in a moment. Hi everyone, well welcome back. Um, well I finished at the spray booth and uh, I've let everything dry and I've got to the best bit I like about um, airbrushing. It's when you start to take all the uh, masking tape and everything off and reveal the final, uh, the finished paint coat. Um, it's a bit like Christmas really. Uh, I really enjoyed this bit. Um, but uh, I've taken the masking off the first part the bulkhead if you remember in the color call out uh, this bulkhead was the two-tone color as well and things look uh, generally okay um, the blue tack masking does seem to have worked uh, there doesn't seem to be have, have been any paint creep uh, and it looks like it's given us a good line to work around on this nice and sharp uh, 
And yeah, other than uh, a little bit of red residue that I can just see there, which just dabbing off, uh, it seems to have worked quite successfully. Um, so uh, I think we'll put that one in the book of things that we can do again. Um, and yeah, looks all right. So when you get to this bit, or if you've got any um, lumpy bumpy bits, to, to mask off on any of your uh, models uh, a bit of blue tack right uh, I'm going to get the rest of it done because there's lots of colours and things here um, lots of bits of equipment that have already been sprayed up and painted uh, and it's time to uh, go start assembling so right there's that flash the camera again never mind right I'll catch you in a moment bye see you in a moment right here we are here it is here's the um, control room uh, this is the deck in the control room with all the bits and pieces uh, glued to it uh, there's still a bit of work to do on it yet with uh, some weathering to do um, and uh, just a couple of little extra pieces before it all goes together uh, this bit here we have confirmed it's part of the attack periscope system um, it's probably working on gyroscopes and things like that inside the a sort of a basic computer uh, uh, an early an early computer which will work out the firing resolutions and uh, angles uh, for the torpedoes before they're fired uh, don't ask me how it works because I just haven't got a clue uh, now then the control room is a little area where well not a little area it's the area where the commander takes command of his submarine um, so in here in the control room it's where it all happens uh, it's where the uh, the, the, uh, the where the, the submarine uh, is planned uh, its day-to-day -day routines uh, where it's uh, planned on its missions uh, the uh, chart table here uh, is used as um, obviously the chart table to put the charts on so they know where they're going uh, working out the courses to steer also this is where the submarine is controlled for diving and surfacing and steering it and getting it around places and there's a lot goes on in here um, so uh, one of the things that um, we could do in the control room is to make it look a little bit busier um, and to do that we could act, uh, add uh, a little bit more detail uh, one of the details is using this big space here is to actually put some charts on it um, yeah, we could get a little bit of paper and draw them out uh, but I find that when I've been making models in the past and I've been trying to make charts or maps to go on tanks and things like that I found that if, if I draw them they never quite like they, they never look right, uh, you know, the, the, the colours are wrong and things like that. Uh, so what I did, I went on to uh, the internet, uh, a quick search for um, sea charts, and I produced, if I can find them now, uh, I produced these. Now these are, um, you go to Google, type in sea charts, and print the screen uh, no type in c charts select images and you will come up with a page like this uh select your page and then print and you'll cut and it will print out like this now these are a little bit big they're uh, particularly for 148 scale so i'm looking around again and finding out the other prints so um, using your uh, print, uh, your printer settings, uh, reduce them in scale and take them down and down. Uh, I think these are the bigger ones. Which ones are the big ones? These are the bigger ones. Take them down, reduce them in size until you get yourself a set of charts of the right scale. These are the original ones, I think. However, it doesn't matter. Uh, just keep reducing them. Uh, reduce them down. I think I went down to about 40%. And you produce yourself a couple of charts. And then all you need to do 
is just cut them out. Find a suitable chart. Uh, try and find a suitable chart. One that will fit nicely on the table. That one there. Then taking, when I can find it, there it is, taking a suitable sharp knife, cut one out. And it is simple and easy. Oh, black in it, yeah. My hands affected the white balance. Uh, and it's as simple and easy as that. And you see that you will have here a C chart. Doesn't matter about what's written on it or how it looks. Uh, come back here. If the white balance doesn't whap it out there. We have there a C chart. And that could go on the table like that. Now you could. Um, charts are never folded. Um, certainly in today's day, charts uh, are usually now on computer and sat navs and things like that. Uh, but for my uh, seafaring days uh, on the uh, marine units and things, charts were never folded because uh, you would always end up that uh, some of your course of steer would end up in a fold. So charts are always rolled. So, um, looking for something to roll it round. Just a piece of this. Just give it a quick roll on the ends. Just to give it that curl. And then, by adding it to your chart table, Yeah. Simple. Uh, I'm going to glue it down. Obviously, I'll glue it, uh, trim it to size. It needs to be just a little bit smaller. Yeah, uh, glue it to size. Uh, but that's how you would produce a chart. Something of detail in your summary. It's simple, just something simple. Um, and you can do the same principle uh, for adding other things around the submarine. Um, you probably think that as you go around. Uh, any ship or any sort of place of work, people will take uh, photographs, mementos of people uh, or the home, particularly if they're away in a submarine for a long time. So they will pin up some pictures and photographs. And you can do exactly the same here. Here we have a small selection. You can't quite see them on the camera. Uh, but these are a small selection of a screen print of uh, German propaganda. Uh, these are German propaganda uh, posters from the Second World War. Just search the same. Uh, German propaganda posters. Google search. Shrink them down. I think these went down to about 4% in size. And as you can see, I've already cut one out. Cut one out there as well. And... You can stick them in your submarine and it just gives that air of, you can see these, it just gives that air of something sort of different. It adds uh, the white balance is going, yeah, I'll have to lock this. Uh, but you can do the same as well, you can just perhaps make out in there, can you? No, it's not going to, it's not going to let us. There we go. E-models. Oh, they've got an E-models. Must be the Deutsche E-Model company. And a little photo of somebody above it. I wonder who that is. But yeah, but you can do the same. You can do the same with photographs. Um, I have here, I've used the paper wisely. It says, can't find it. I have here um, some photographs of Donitz and Hitler, which I'm sure... In the Second World War, there will have been pictures of their Admiral and the Führer uh, dotted around the submarine. So I'll be cutting some of those out and adding some of those in the submarine. There we go again. Add Donitz and Hitler. Google search. There we go. Photographs. And you can add uh, anything you want. So that's uh, a little bit of a touch just to 
have a look, you know, just to make it something that you can add in the photographs. Right, that's, as these are all affecting the white balance, let's get rid of them. Um, yeah, so that, that's what you would find, well, you certainly find the charts in the control room and that's just the one of them. So, right, I've got a little something now that we'll go and have a look at. Um, see this bit here? Let's go and have a look at it in the submarine itself. Alright, see you in a moment. Okay, right, this is some footage from the uh, PC game uh, from Ubisoft, uh, Silent Hunter 5. Um, I got given this by my son who'd had it kicking around in his bedroom for some time uh, and asked if it would be of any use. So I just sort of had a look at it and then I realised that the submarine featured in this is the um, Type 7C, the t same type as we're, uh, we're building at the moment. Um, and looking around at the gameplay footage it seemed like it was fairly accurate um, to what uh, is going on in the kit as well. Uh, so I thought it'd be a good idea to use that as a comparison and sort of find how things relate to each other inside the submarine. Uh, right, so uh, without further ado, let's go across to the submarine, get on board and we'll go and have a quick look around. Okay, see you in a moment. Right, welcome aboard the submarine. Uh, we start at the top of the conning tower and we'll uh, move down into the first section. There's the top sides where we've just come from. And looking around this first section, we see pieces of equipment all around the uh, the bulkheads. And there is the attack periscope, uh, where the commander conducts his attack and works the resolutions out for the torpedoes. Moving down into the control room itself, uh, we find one or two members of the crew down here, and the skipper uh, sort of working everything out. Uh, there's the chart table that we spoke about earlier. Uh, moving around, uh, there's the other desk with the bits of equipment, the code books, uh, identification books, uh, that piece that we uh, installed in the submarine. Uh, moving past the skipper, and we move aft a little bit in the control room. Uh, we can see all the wheels and dials, even some uh, bananas hung up. Um, we can see the checker plate floor. Uh, that's quite faithfully reproduced in the kit itself. I'm uh, having a look around some more bits of equipment. All the dials, levers, everything everywhere. Um, and there we have a first look at that piece of equipment that there was a bit of a discussion about. And we now know it's part of the um, attack periscope that we, we just uh, had a look at on the deck above. Uh, obviously the navigator there working away at his charts. And there's the uh, sort of manhole shape cover. I'm sure you could identify that part uh, and equate to it now. Uh, looking around again, and just to the left of the skipper there is the uh, attack, is, sorry, that's the search periscope. Um, some more bits of equipment, not quite sure what they are, but the chap sat down on the right hand side there. That's the, uh, the helmsman. Moving through the watertight bulkhead, uh, we're coming to the officer's sleeping quarters. There's the skipper's bed, a uh, privacy curtain around it, uh, some uh, equipment cabinets, back of the watertight door, and here is the sonar room. There's the sonar operator, He's waiting for his orders. I'm looking forward again, and move forward a little bit. And now we can see the radio operator waiting for the orders to come through, uh, orders to sail. Uh, this is the sleeping area for the uh, senior ratings, the uh, bunks on the left hand side we put into the submarine. These on the right here where this chap's sleeping, these have been removed so we can actually see into the submarine in the kit. And there that's the toilet, uh, if you know where you're at now, that's the toilet, the toilet door, the heads. Moving through forward now into the torpedo room. Um, we can see how narrow these submarines must be for living. There's two, sub, uh, two torpedoes on the floor. 
I remember there's maybe a dozen guys living in this area. Uh, the bunks are stored away at the moment, so we can just see the torpedoes and the, the racks for moving them about. Load them into the four torpedo tubes, which are there. Uh, probably the torpedo man there. So we have a look round. That's as far forward as we can go. And um, we move back again now. Uh, slide past. Leave these guys asleep in here. And uh, we can get that watertight door open. Some of the sonar equipment. And there down in the bottom, down in the corner there, just in front of the door. Um, we could find some bits and pieces of storage. They must have used every bit of available space in here. All right, we're back into the control room now, and I think at that we'll uh, leave it um, from the submarine. Let these guys get on with what they're doing, and hopefully this part's worked, and we can uh, use it again in the future. Anyway, uh, so let's get back uh, to the build. See you in a moment. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Well, then, um, hopefully now you've had a look around the submarine and can sort of. Uh, appreciate um, where everything goes. Uh, I say hopefully because I, as I'm filming this bit, uh, I haven't really an idea of what the um, the video around the submarine is going to look like. But never mind, we'll carry on. We're going to finish now and put this uh, control room together. At last, it has fought me all the way. Uh, there's hundreds of bits. Uh, there's uh, painting to be done, there's weathering to be done, uh, there's parts to be glued on and there's parts to be re-glued on as they all fall apart uh, because they get knocked off. Um, but finally I can hope that we can get it all together. And as you see we've uh, carried on and done some of the weathering uh, just the same as we've done before on the previous deck. Um, the, the officer's compartment and the torpedo room uh, and now it's uh, time to put the um, bulkheads in that's one of them I think that's a four I think it's a forward one I'm not quite sure which way around they go yet and the aft one uh, and also the deck head as well uh, that's that bit in here um, now you did see the problems that we had with a fight in the uh, officer's compartment of all the pipe work that went in and across the top. Uh, there's some pipe work to go in on this one, uh, one with a, a couple of valves on it. Uh, there's a little, um, another one, bit of pipe work here. I think that's a speaking tube. It looks like a sort of communications type thing. You remember on the, the ships where they just used to holler down a, a voice pipe? Uh, that's that one. Uh, the ladder is to go in as well. It does say on the instructions to uh, put it on and glue it in uh, but I find that it actually protrudes uh, through the access hatch and it's best I think if you leave this off until um, everything's together and then you can slide it in and glue it in place it's just when the drive fit uh, it did sort of make things a little bit difficult to try and get things together Another thing I've left free, I'll just move these out of the way, we'll swap them around, is the uh, search periscope um, because it protrudes through and you can push it uh, through, see, and I'm not quite sure how much at the moment it needs to go through. It will only go one way, there's a little locating lug on it, uh, but I'm not sure how it goes through because I'm sure this rests on the bottom mount. Um, in on the control room deck, uh, this little bit here, that and there. Uh, right. So, uh, rather than subject you all to the cursing and swearing and pushing together and things like that as it all glues and falls apart, uh, I'm going to go and get it done. Uh, I'll come back to you in a few moments' time when hopefully it's all done and we can have a look at putting the lights in. The lighting in this one is a little bit different to what we saw on the the last um, video of the officers compartment. Uh, I'll explain more of that when we come to do them. And that bit's just falling out, I see. Right, oh, here we go, get it done. See you in a moment. 
here we are again. Oh, doesn't look like we've done much, but um, this time I've uh, gone and put the lighting in. Look, watch. Uh, white lights. Red lights. White lights. Red lights. The principle of putting these lights in was the same as in the other sections where we just took some uh, 1.6 millimeter drill, um, drilled the lights uh, through the deck head and placed them in. This time what I did, um, because of the different color in the lighting, I just wanted to make sure that the, the lights uh, were facing the right way. I didn't want them sort of facing the bulkhead and sort of losing the brightness or um, the filling the cabin with um, with light. So what I did, I did each one individually and you can't really see them but they are in there. Uh, I did each, there's one there, there's the first one. Uh, I did each one individually, uh, just checked it for position by turning it round and then I uh, just put a touch of super glue just to hold the wire uh, in the right position and then as we'll do before we'll come along and fill these holes in so that no light escapes through to the top of the, uh, the, the, the deck head. Um, right there's quite a lot of wiring for these because they're um, by colour. Uh, there's, three, there's three cables on each lamp. Uh, these here uh, the resistors just to bring the voltage down so that we can run them off batteries uh, and um, the batteries won't run out as quick um, so that's how they come they're, they're already prepared uh, there's the live feed for this one uh, from the battery pack uh, that goes direct and feeds each light and then the uh, neutral return that's that one uh, and then the switch here, which is a changeover switch, as we spoke to, spoke about before. Uh, center off, uh, one color, and then the other one. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, um, I'm just quickly going to put all these cables together. I'm going to leave them in the lens because we can't cut them off because of these. But what I do want to do is uh, make sure that these cables, uh, wires, cables, these wires are all sort of kept together uh, and then when we find the final position uh, we can run them out. Now what do we need for this? The best way I'm going to, I could do this is to do a little bit of soldering with it. Uh, I'll show you just briefly how to do some, just move this things out of the way, how to do some uh, just quick soldering. What do we need? We need a um, 40 watt soldering iron because the cable, the wires are not really too big. Uh, we need some uh, resin core solder. Uh, this is solder with um, a flux in the middle of it. It's rather small but if you were to put it under a, a magnifying glass you'll see that the, down the end of the core, down the end of the wire, uh, throughout the wire is uh, a layer of flux. Um, a small screwdriver just to unfasten the cables. The, this is just a temporary setup, just to show, just to uh, try everything out. Now, what we need to do here is twist the cables together, twist the wires together. Keep calling them cables. And we are going to get a bit of a mix up just down in here because they all will cross over. But just make sure you've got, in this case, there's five wires from five lights or five, three lots of five, 15 wires, and all the right colours are all together. Now, all we need to do is tin. Tin that. I'm going to fetch the stand in here just to uh, hold these onto. Now what we want to do, all we're doing with the soldering iron, we're not putting drops of solder on and then taking them to the cable. Uh, we're using the 
solder that was tinned to the end of the uh, soldering iron just to transfer the heat into the cable itself and it doesn't need much and just touch the solder onto the cable hope you can see that let's move the camera in a little bit more once again just tin your soldering iron touch it on let the heat transfer into the wire and we're done a bit of an extra piece of solder on that soldering again just touch the soldering iron to the wire and we should be all done and it's as quick and simple as that. Hope you could see that. Uh, but nothing, soldering isn't anything to worry about. It's ideal. Uh, it's an ideal way for doing photo etch actually. If you're building photo etch parts, and if I bring these up now, we should be able to see them. They are quite cool now. How the, I think this one needs just a touch more. Well, they're all soldered together now. Uh, makes for a good electrical connection and we'll trim those up just take the ends off if it will find my steps Just use these. What I may do is actually uh, extend these wires rather than put them into a connector block like that. I may just use some uh, extra wire just to extend the length of them. Um, when we put them into the hole, um, we can work out. Um, a remote areas for putting the switches uh, and we'll go and have a look at that now and we're going to see what it's uh, all going to fit together like right so we've gone to the final parts I think so see you in a moment oh welcome back then um, well this section I think we'll make this the last section of the video um, this uh, Control room has really fought me on this bit with all the bits and pieces, but I said that already anyway. Uh, I thought I'd get the hull out, and we're at a stage now where I'm beginning to think we should see how it all goes together. Uh, it's the first time I've had the hull out of the box, and since I did uh, a review and I looked in the box and things like that. Uh, so it's time to give it a go. Now I've moved the camera back a little bit because um, I don't really know how we're going to get it all in. Uh, but we'll have a go. Um, these are the three sections. There's uh, the officer's quarters, the torpedo room over there, and the bit that we've just done uh, with all the cables. Uh, the control room. Um, now it does look as though it f does go together fairly simply. I I'm not going to glue them in, I'm just going to put them in for effect. Uh, they're locating uh parts in the in the hull itself and hopefully we should be able to uh slot them in uh right this is the bigger bit uh that must go in there somewhere like uh he says like that that's that one in yep um Right, the next one will be uh, the officer's quarters and that will clip. Uh, it does seem to be that there is 
room in the uh, what would be the outer ballast tanks uh, so there should be some room enough to get the cables in I'm just moving them out of the way for this bit I'm just gently tr I'm not trying to force anything in I'm just trying this is the first time I've done this so that should that sits in there then that one yes look at that yeah as I say it looks like there's room here in the ballast tanks for the cables to run along so it's just about finding a way out for them um, to the switch uh, right they can slot in there as well um, this bit mm. uh, the catching the ladders just catching there in the access hatch there uh, it seems to go in something like that so there are the first three sections it's quite heavy now look at something like um, I think yep there's going to be a need to spray on the inside of this uh, because if we're going to see sections of the hull from the inside um, certainly need to be spraying them black or something uh, right let's take these out and we can discuss what's going to go on to the on next with the hull uh, because I think it's time to sort of start some work on the hull. Although we're not ready, it's not going to be ready till the end. I'll put them there. What I do have to do for this hull, all these freeing ports. So I think rather than just wait until the end, until I'm ready to work on the hull, and then start drilling all these out, there's loads of them. Some down here, some along here, some further down here, lots of them. I think rather than sort of stay at the end and just sit down and drill them all out, I'll start and do a few now. I can't even get it all in shot. There we are, some down here as well. These are the torpedo tubes, uh, the bow doors. So I think. Uh, I'll be getting a drill out and having to go at these uh, bit by bit and eventually get it all done. Uh, right, I think we're going to call this video, uh, this episode, I think we'll call it It for tonight. Um, it's been a bit dragged out trying to get it along but uh, there's been really a lot going on uh, and a lots and lots of bits to paint and glue together in that uh, control room. But what I'm going to do from now on, um, until we get to this bit, until we get to the hull and we start painting and weathering and the bits that you want to see, uh, I'll start and do some video diaries. Um, rather than sitting and watching everything going together, uh, which becomes a little bit repetitive, uh, unless it's bits and pieces that I think might be of interest to watch and how it goes together, uh, because it's just a matter of paint, glue, weather now. Uh, for the rest of the compartments um, I'll just do some quick video diaries it allow me to get this built quicker as well um, and then you can come back and see it from time to time and then as I say once we get to the outside we start painting and weathering and it all it get it until it all starts going together um, you can come back and see it then anyway I'm waffling on um, but thanks for coming along uh, thanks for watching um, and thanks to the guys at eModels, eModels.co.uk. Um, as we say, if uh, you if they haven't got it, you probably don't need it for your modelling needs. But if they haven't got it and you do want it, contact them, uh, get in touch with them, and see what they can sort out for you. Uh, but that's all from me at the moment from Ted. Uh, and thank you for watching. <sighs> it's been a long episode this one. Uh, it's been a long time getting this out. All right. 
time to go. I'll see you next time. Bye now.